Hi, my name is Mylon Lefevre, and music is in my blood. I got my first big break when Elvis Presley recorded a song I'd written at 17 years old. That moment changed my life forever. I went from having nothing to having my dreams come true. I toured the world and played with some of the biggest names in music and had more money than I knew what to do with. I finally hit rock bottom when I almost died from a drug overdose, and it became painfully obvious something had to change. Everything did change when I gave my life to Jesus at a second chapter of Acts concert in 1980. God instantly delivered me from drugs and totally turned my life around. I began to use my gift of music for the Lord and started a Christian band, Mylon and Broken Heart. It eventually grew to be one of the biggest Christian rock bands in the world at the time. We won several Grammys and Dove Awards, but most importantly, we led over 200,000 kids to Christ. Now, years later, I'm still living for Jesus, and my wife, Christy, and I travel the globe proclaiming God's goodness. I've been from rock bottom to the mountaintop, and I'm going all the way to heaven, so come on and join me on the road to freedom. to On the Road to Freedom. I'm Christy Lefebvre, and this is my husband, Mylon, and we're at the amazing, magnificent Grand Canyon, the South Rim, and it is a beautiful day. And we are discussing the fruit of the Holy Spirit. And we're on part eight. This is the fruit of gentleness. And just to let you know, if you wanna catch up with us on all the fruit of the Spirit, you just go to our website at mylon.org and you can see all of them there. So on the fruit of the Spirit, gentleness, I wanna remind you what Galatians 5, 22 and 23 says, that the fruit, that the Holy Spirit the work that His presence accomplishes within us is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, that's where we are today, and self-control. And on the fruit of gentleness, I was amazed at when I started researching the scriptures for gentle in the beginning, I didn't think I would find that much. I don't know why, but it just didn't dawn on me the significance of the fruit of gentleness. And by the time I got to the end of this in preparation for our show today, I was just amazed at how important gentleness is to oh, the Lord. We could have preached for a week on this, couldn't Oh, we? yes. Yeah. And so the definition of gentleness is, uh, number one in the Webster's Dictionary, softness of manners. Hmm. Just just having manners. Yeah. If you'll just do that, you'll be fruitful for the kingdom. Mildness of temper, sweetness of dis disposition. Now, I want to talk to you all, all you ladies out there. I know there's been several times where I've been um, uh, encouraged and, and had friends say, well, I just appreciate that. That's so sweet of you or that. And I remember at times thinking, well, I'm thankful for that, but surely there's more I can do for you, Lord, than just being sweet. <laughs> and when I read this, and it's still a good thing, but what I'm saying is what the Lord revealed to me is sweetness of disposition. When we're just sweet, we're being fruitful. Yeah. We're actually serving the Lord in that. We're being, actually being like Him. We're, being we're like imitating Him. him. Yes. Can, do you yes. know what your life would be like if God wasn't gentle? Right, right. And kind, and patient. Kind. Yes. Good and faithful. If he didn't, if he didn't have self-control, and we did something that made him mad. Whew. Right. So all we're trying to this fruit of the spirit, the fruit of the spirit is a description of God. That's it. Thank it you. is the character and personality of Jesus Christ, and so we are encouraging you, and of course we're encouraging ourselves. We right. read this when you guys aren't looking. That's Everything right. we do in front of you, we do this every day at our house, and we do it together. In fact, the way this Bible study started, 
was we used to ride motorcycles together. Me and Michael and Sherry and Christy and a bunch of our friends and Rob and Sylvia would get out on our motorcycles. But the way we'd start our rides every day, every morning, we'd meet out after breakfast. We'd hold hands, have a prayer time. One of us would share something that we'd learned in, uh, recently from the scripture. And then we'd have a prayer time and we'd have a praise time. And all this is is an extension of that. Yeah, that's Amen. right. Trying to learn how to to allow the fruit of the Holy Spirit to produce Jesus in us. Amen. So again, you know, I just want to encourage you when you're just when you're just sweet to people, that is the fruit of gentleness, and you are bearing fruit for Jesus. Yes, that's right. um, meekness it de it's defined as kindness, benevolence, and tenderness. Yeah. Being tender with people, you know, I love that about you. You know, you hear that word a lot, a gentleman, and I was so impressed with my husband when I met him because he is a gentle person. He's a kind man. He has a tender heart for the Lord and for others, but he's a man. He's a man's man and he is strong and he is tough when it comes to the word and when it comes to doing the word. And I'd never seen the combination of the two that you really could be a gentle man. And I really admire that about you, Mylon. Oh, I love really that sweet, about baby. you. Thank you. That, that was a sweet word. <laughs> First Timothy 6 and verse 11 in the NASB says this, Man or woman of God, pursue righteousness, godliness, faith, love, perseverance, and gentleness. You want to be a man or a woman of God? then pursue these things, yeah. and you will be. Pursue doesn't mean we already got them, but it means we're going after them. Mm -hmm. What? We're Righteousness, godliness, faith, love, perseverance, and gentleness. Colossians 3 and verse 12 says, Since God chose you to be a holy people that He loves, you must clothe yourselves with tenderhearted mercy, kindness, humility, here it is again, gentleness, yeah. and patience. Clothe yourself. Yes. Yeah, put it on. Put you it gotta on put like it on. You put it That's on right. like you put on a coat when mm -hmm. it's cold. Amen. Matthew 11, verse 29 says, Take my yoke upon you. Now, this is Jesus talking. Mm -hmm. This is the way you accomplish the goal. And learn of me. That's how you, that's how you take the yoke of God upon you. You learn of him. It's exactly what you're doing right now. You're seeking and learning. He said, For I'm gentle and humble and lowly in heart, and you will find rest, relief, and ease and refreshment and recreation and blessed quiet for your soul. Your mind, you know where you get most of the chaos, come, worry, all the, the pressure is thinking. In fact, I, I read one day in the dictionary the uh, description of confusion was just simply too many thoughts. It didn't say evil thoughts. It just said too many. You could be thinking of too many Bible scriptures and get confused and not know which one's the right one you need to be talking or thinking about. I mean, confusion is just too much. But Jesus said, take my yoke upon you. Learn of me. Yes. I'm meek and holy and I'm not going to put a heavy weight on you. My yoke is easy. My burden's light. He goes on to say, um, he'll give you refreshment and recreation, relief and, and blessed quiet for your will and your emotions. I mean, if you want your will to be like his, you got to give it to him and let him deal with it. Amen. Numbers 12. And you know, concerning recreation, I got to say, again, Jesus wants you to have fun serving him. Oh, preach You know, girl. yes, we're filming these shows and, and, and it's, it's work. It's, a, it's, we're out here and it might be a hundred degrees now. Easy. We are melting. I mean, we are just if pouring with sweat. If it ain't a hundred degrees, it missed a real good chance, <laughs> yes. dude. I am. Uh, we're working, but at the same time, we're making sure that every day we're taking some recreation. We're making time to play, to ride our Harleys, to make sure we all have good meals together. We laugh together. And I encourage you today to make time for recreation. Jesus wants you to enjoy your life. Amen. Mm -hmm. And I do. Amen. I Praise do too. God. Numbers 12 and verse 3 in the Amplified says this. Now the man Moses, Moses was an amazing person. Now the man Moses was very meek, gentle, that's what we're talking about, gentleness, and kind and humble. 
are above all the men on the face of the earth. Yeah. The most humble, kind, gentle man on the earth. Now that's a meek, yeah. gentle, easy going mm -hmm. on the whole earth. I mean, think of that. Yeah. Verse 6 says, if there's a prophet among you, I, the Lord, make myself known to him in a vision, or I speak to him in a dream. But he said, not so with my servant Moses. Yeah. He is entrusted and faithful in all my house. And, it, and because Moses was such a gentle man, such a godly man, God said, I speak to him directly, directly. clearly, wow. and not in, not in hidden speeches. Yeah. But he beholds the form of the Lord. God trusted his humility and his gentleness and his meekness. God trusted him like he didn't trust anybody else. He allowed him to know stuff about him. He actually spoke to, to Moses mouth to mouth, the Bible says, and, and clearly, uh, directly. My goodness. So there is a, an incredible reward for being gentle. If you've been following my ministry for very long, then you already know Michael Howell and his wife, Sherry. They've been partners with us in ministry for so many years. We've made records together, probably 20, 25 years. Yeah. Uh, Rob, our, our sound guy here, uh, Matthew and Mary, there, there's so many guys that you would know. But I asked Michael to step in here for a second because not only do we work together making music or making we made a five-year devotional um, church on the run together. We've done all kind of stuff all over the world together. But I asked Michael to come in and join me because I partner with his ministry because they do things that I can't do. And he partners with my ministry. He sows his finances in our ministry and helps us to do what we're anointed to do. And vice versa, you want to share something, Michael, sure. about how well, that works? For me, it's it's just the reality that we need each other in the body of Christ. No one ministry or one minister or one person is anointed to do it all. We all have our place and our gifting and our part to do in the kingdom. And so when I sow into you, there's an anointing that's on your life that I partake of. And when you yes. sow into me, vice versa. Exactly. Um, and we also reap the financial benefit. And so, exactly. Um, in short, we need each other. We and, need each uh, other. And we need you. We need your help just like you need ours. If you want to help us to take a whole bunch of people to heaven when we go, then all you got to do is go to mylon.org, M-Y-L-O-N.org. Click on Team Mylon, fill that out, become our partner, and we will believe God with you for supernatural increase in your life. God said it, we believe it, and we expect it. And we'll be praying for you, you'll be praying for us, and you and me will take a whole bunch of people to heaven with us when we go. And God will bless you for it. Proverbs 15, 4. You want to read this oh, one, my love? this one. Come on. A gentle tongue with its healing power is a tree of life, mm. but willful contrariness <laughs> in it breaks down the spirit, meaning someone who's just contentious can actually break down um, yeah. someone's spirit. Sure. And, but a gentle tongue can bring healing. And, you know, when we... When and we, you have a healing tongue. You need to talk about this one, baby. You're gracious in your words. Well, I actually Please. was about to commend you. When we were dating, one of the things that I didn't even realize the areas that I needed healing in 
that Mylan ministered to me through a gentle tongue. And that is... Well, it was just the opposite for me. I thought it was you. I had come out of a situation and I had a lot of luggage from the past and, and I had gotten married before when I was unsaved. And, and I was the head of the home, but I didn't know how to lead the home, but I was leading it anyway and I was leading it in the wrong direction. And it's not anybody else's fault but mine, but uh, it was a mess. And because there was a lot of uh, strife and division and, and anger and, and unforgiveness and bitterness and all those things, a lot of words were said that shouldn't have been said. And, uh, and I was beat down and I did not know after you, after you, um, you get to where you're not sure what to do because you want to be, you want everybody to like your decisions, but if nobody ever likes any of them, you get punchy. And you're like, um, afraid to make a decision because you don't want anybody making fun of your decision and blaming all the problems on you, et cetera, et cetera. And the healing words, yeah. well, oh my goodness, Lord. that Christy spoke to me, Amen. were so powerful and so full of love and of gentleness and kindness and just the fruit of the Holy Spirit. That's what I was talking about. It, it, it goes both ways anyway, praise God. And you know what, the words that God gave me for him, which wives, I really encourage you to listen for the leading of the spirit where your husbands are concerned. And husbands, mm -hmm. you can do this for your wives because yes, this is what Mylon did for me also um, in the beginning. He spoke words of life. Proverbs says, death and life are in the power of the tongue, mm. and they that indulge in it shall eat the fruit of it for good or bad. That's right. And so we want to speak good words. Good words. We want to speak words of life. Full of life. Yeah. Full of love. Full of gentleness. <laughs> yes. So the words that the Lord gave me for you that you needed to hear, He instructed me in, were to tell Him in, in particular before He went into the pulpit to minister. It may be for you before your husband goes out the door to his job every day. Um, husbands, before you leave to go to work to minister to your wife and how she mothers the children and she's at home, mm, um, you know, taking care of the house for you, cooking meals, doing laundry and ministering to her. God's, God will give you husband words of life. If you, if you just take a minute, man, and let her know before you go, I'm going to be praying for you today, baby. I know your job is not easy either. Right. I know that you have tremendous responsibilities and I know it gets old changing diapers and, and, and washing dishes right. and all of those things that you have to do, all the errands you have to run, all the things that you build, you have to pay, yes, the stuff that you, yes, yes. a thousand hats that you wear. I want you to know I appreciate you and I love you and I'm so thankful that you do those things and you do them good. And if there's an area where she's struggling, speak the things that are not yet as though they were. Mm -hmm. Let her know, I know that you didn't sleep good last night, I heard you say that, and, and I know that, that you're not comfortable with this certain situation, but I believe it's going, I believe the word says that all things work together for the good of those that love the Lord. And honey, I know you love the Lord, mm -hmm. and I know it's going to work out. Today's going to be a good day, yeah. and basically That's if good. you do that, husbands, Amen. what you're doing is you're prophesying yeah. a better day over your wife. Yeah. Just a few words of kindness and gentleness can make all the difference in her day, mm -hmm. just like a woman can do the same for a guy. Right. And the Lord told me to tell you, remind him I love you. Always, yes. Always remind him how much you love him because God is love. I love you. I'm in agreement with you and you are anointed. So those were the three. And I also added at one point, because we'd had a fuss, I honor you. Yes, you did. <laughs> because I'd said good. some things that were not honorable, and the Lord corrected me on it. So now I have added that I honor you, honey. And again, speak those words. Your gentle tongue will bring healing power yes. to that situation Amen. and to that life. Amen. The Proverbs 15 and verse 1 says, A gentle answer turns, turns away, away wrath. wrath. A gentle answer. When somebody says something to you and you're tempted to get hot about it, a gentle answer turns away wrath, but a harsh word just stirs up anger and makes it worse. So, you know, we have a choice. It's not easy. I'm not telling you I do this all the time. Sometimes, I, you know, if we get frustrated with each other and, and Christy gets loud, I try to get louder. That's not God's way. Those are the days I don't pass the test. 
but the goal is to give a gentle answer and turn away wrath. And I believe we're we're doing better than we used to, aren't we, baby? We are in a yeah, we are. This is not in but you just have to keep pursuing it. In addition to your marriage, it's when you're out and about every day. If that waitress isn't very kind to you, or she's curt or short, or your boss oh, isn't yeah. kind that day, then this says a gentle answer turns away wrath. And as we have practiced that, in the midst of that situation, God's turned it. You see their attitude change. Yeah, for sure. Amen. Ephesians 4 and verse 2 says, Be completely humble and gentle. Again, we're talking about gentleness, the fruit of mm -hmm. the Spirit of God. Completely. Be patient, bearing with one another in love. That's the love laugh. Yeah. You can't have the love laugh where, remember, faith works by love. You want, when you ask God for something, you want to get it then you got to stay in love. The love walk is just real simple. Be completely humble and gentle. Be patient, bearing with one another in love. Philippians 4 and verse 5 says this, Let your gentleness be evident to all. For the Lord is near. The coming of the Lord is near. How do, how do I do that? Well, if I'm really gentle, I'm not just faking it. You know, that's like saying... I can say I'm humble, but being humble is not acting humble. Being humble is is you really don't think too much of yourself and you don't hold yourself up as some hero, but you realize I'm a servant of the Most High God and it's just an honor and a privilege to get to speak His Word to you. And I, and, and I love being His servant. Titus uh, 3 and verse 1 and 2, I love this in the NLT, it says, Remind the believers to submit to the government and its officers. They should be obedient, mm. always ready to do what's good. They must not slander anyone, and they must avoid quarreling. Wow. Now, remember when you're in, tempted to get involved in a protest somewhere. You know that a lot of times though, those protests turn into chaos because some people don't go there willing to be obedient to the government and its officers. Some people just want to, to get a riot going and, and, uh, and tear up a store and steal them a TV or something, you know? And, and we are not a part of that. We are a part of the solution, not the problem. If we love, we're not there to go against anybody. We're for everybody. Yes. Black lives matter, blue lives matter, white lives matter, yellow and red lives matter, yeah. all lives matter. All Jesus lives died for all of us. I'm not against anybody, I'm on everybody's side. I want them all to get to heaven. God de desired that none should perish and all should have everlasting life. We need to stop the dissension and the strife in America, at least to pray for those people who are still in it, but to not be a part of that. Amen. Amen. They must not slander anyone, me meaning remind the believers. Here's what it says. Remind the believers. That's you, us people. Yeah. Submit to the government and its officers. They should be obedient, always ready to do what's good. They should not slander anyone and must avoid quarreling. Instead, they should be gentle and show true humility to everyone. They should be gentle. Not against anybody on everybody's side, trying to take them all to heaven with us. Amen. Why don't you read this last one and we'll close with this, my love. Okay. First Peter 3.15 says, But in your hearts, revere Christ as Lord, mm. and always be prepared to give an answer to everyone who asks you to give the reason for the hope that you have. But do it with gentleness and respect. Yeah. Again, I've talked about on previous shows, yes, we need to be bold. The righteous are as bold as a lion. And we're always to speak the truth. But when we speak the truth, we speak it in love. And this verse confirms again, when you give an answer for what you believe, do it with gentleness. Do it with respect. Amen. Amen. That's awesome, baby. Well, man, thank you again for coming and hanging out with us today here in magnificent Grand Canyon. Yes. Man, it is, uh, it's actually cooling off. In the yes, midst of that crazy. last one, we got a nice cool breeze. <laughs> the crows quit crowing and flying over us and, and the wind blew our, uh, all of our notes off the rooftop where we're filming today. It's been a really wonderful morning. 
And we're having so much fun. Thank you for letting us come into your life and share Jesus with you today. So until we see you again, I'm encouraging you to stay in the Word of God. Uh, keep your mind on things above. Let God, by His Spirit, produce the fruit of the Holy Spirit, especially gentleness today in your life. And until we see you again, don't forget to invite all your friends to join us here. And uh, we will see you next week. In the meantime, don't forget to stay on the road to freedom. What better place could there be for somebody to get born again than in front of this magnificent view of God's love and creation? So if you've never been born again, I just want to pray a simple prayer with you. I, the night that I got saved, I was at a concert by a band called the Second Chapter of Acts. And the guy stepped out on the stage in the concert, Buck Hearing was his name. And he just simply said, you know, some of you guys have prayed. You know there's a God. You've asked Him for help. You believe even that Jesus is His Son. And yet you've never allowed Him to change your life because you've given Him your problems, but you've never given Him your life. And I knew that was me. I knew God was talking to me. And so that night, I just simply asked Him to forgive me. And that's all you need to do. You need to take responsibility for any sins. They're just mistakes. Before I found out who God is and how much He loved me, I made a lot of mistakes. I sinned and came short of His glory. But if you want to receive Jesus, just pray this simple prayer with Him. Right where you are, your whole world is about to change. I promise you. Say this, Father God, in the name of Jesus, I receive your Son as my Lord and Savior and Master and King. Lord, I take responsibility for my mistakes, for my sins, and I repent. I ask you to forgive me, sir, and I thank you for doing it, God. I just plead the blood of Jesus over my mind, my, my body, my life, my family, my finances, my health. And I ask you to teach me your way and help me to rise up in the things of the Spirit. Strengthen me, Lord. And thank you for hearing me. Thank you for loving me. Thank you for forgiving me. In Jesus' name. If you prayed that prayer, all you got to do is go tell anybody that Jesus is your Lord, you believed on Him, and you confessed Him with your lips, you are now born again, a new creature in Christ. We'll be praying for you guys every day. I don't know your name, but I don't need to because God does. I promise you I'll keep my faith active in your life. You get in touch with us at mylon.org if there's anything we can do to help you get to heaven, and not just get to heaven, but enjoy the trip. God bless you, man.